And uh, we'll go ahead. We'll do the hands raise thing again, folks, and we'll uh, get started here. Questions for Devin. Rich Scarcella, get us started. Hey, Devin, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Can, can you tell us um, what it felt for you to be back with the team after everything that you went through last week and to have a productive game as you did? Uh, I mean, it felt pretty good. I mean, to come out here and play a game again, you know, play the game of football. So great. Play with my team, actually get a dub. You know, I'm on the field, on the sideline with them and going through those struggles and those coaching adjustments or anything else on the field. Like, I was there for all that. So definitely felt great to be back. Neil Riddell. Hey, Devin. Uh, condolences uh, to you. Uh, also wondering, are you able to tell us, you know, what – what kind of uh, or the family member or the friend that you lost? Uh, it was my brother. And uh, no, no details about that, though. But thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Audrey Snyder. Hey, Devin. Uh, sorry for your loss. I'm just, just hopping yeah, in. I, mean, I, um, I wanted to ask you about that two quarterback usage that we're seeing with this offense this season. Uh, what's the benefit to your offense when you're able to get both Will and Sean involved? Uh, I mean, it just throws a little twist, and it's like you think about like Drew Brees, and you know, I compared them to Drew Brees, and uh, and uh, dang, what's the name? Taysom Hill. No, you know what I'm saying, like that Drew Brees, Taysom Hill type of flow, and you know what I'm saying, they got, they both can do both, like they both can run, they both can throw the ball. So having both quarterbacks in the game was an amazing, amazing threat. Because now you got two people that can do the same thing with the offense, or if not, you know what I'm saying, better than the other. And it's just also like we also, you know what I'm saying, we grind and work that. So them, you know what I'm saying, coming every single week of practice and competing every single day, that, that just makes our offense even much better. That's the fact that we had no two quarterbacks that can come into the game and that can change the game or, you know what I'm saying, do what we got to do. Tyler Donahue. Hi, Devin. Uh, prayers to you and your family. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, last Saturday, I don't know what your situation was. Did you watch the game live? And, and if you did, what was your reaction seeing what Kevon did over the course of that matchup against Michigan? Man, it was, it was happy. Like I told y'all earlier about how I think it was someone asked me something about a uh, you know a question about how the young boys are going to do. And I told y'all, I said, these guys, they, they if they prepare like starters, they, will, they can play like a starter. So obviously you seen what happened on the field uh, uh, last weekend with Kevon and, you know, He's just young. He's still growing. So you're going to see a lot more of that, too. Mm -hmm. Peter Tristra. Hey, Devin. Sorry if you've been asked this before, but uh, from your perspective in the backfield, what kind of push were you seeing from your offensive line today? I thought I saw a lot of push. I thought a good push, you know, saying we we're getting at least one, two, three yards off the ball, you know, dragging people back. And, you know, it's making the holes easier for – uh, me and Kevon and Sean and Will for everyone to read for real. And it was, it was great. It was nice to see all that. It was, it just felt good. Rich Scarcella. Rich, you're muted. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm good now. Yeah, Devin, can you, two things. One, what did it mean to have the support of your coaches and teammates after you went through? And, and I'm, I'm also very sorry for your loss. And secondly, um, to to win back-to-back um, -back games here now, what kind of momentum does that create for the rest of the season? Uh, the coaches definitely helped me out a lot just about being, you know, saying father figures as they're all they were. So, you know, just being around me, just keep my spirits up. And, you know what I'm saying? Keep my head in the game. I and mean, also, you know, it's life, life sucks. And, you know, people, people obviously pass away. So you got to be able to move on and continue about your, your day and about your life and continue to run. So, I mean, I try not to let it affect me as much, but I mean, it's still going to hurt me here and there, but you know, that's part of the game. And then, uh, what was the second question? Sorry. That's okay. What can this winning back to back games, what kind of momentum do you guys have now going into the final two games and perhaps a bowl game? Yeah, we have, I mean, obviously getting any win is a great thing. So having two back to back is a wonderful thing from, you know, obviously from the coaching standpoint and what we've been doing and what we're doing right. I mean, I mean, we've been clicking, we've been making things work, and it's come out in our favor, and it's starting to, you know, show that our team is, you know, we have a team. It's just not, we just haven't been able to play like we wanted to play all year. And, um, you know, it hurt us at times, but it's all right. And, um, but yeah. If Arthur good, you know, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Devin. My bad. No, no, no. You're fine. Go ahead. All right. 
Uh, Parth Ubadjaya, go ahead. Hey, Devin. Uh, sorry for your loss, man. Um, I asked Sean this question. It's kind of, a, I guess, a tough question to answer, but um, what is it taken for y'all to, to get to this point? You know, you, you go through those five consecutive losses, and now you're at a point where you can win four straight. You can possibly get to a bowl game and not finish with a losing record. Uh, what's gone into that switch there? So what, like, what, what caused that switch? What was it? Yeah, like, like what did it take for – that kind of complete 180 to happen for y'all? I mean, about anything you do in life, it's about a mentality. You don't have the right mentality towards anything. You're not going to be able to do it right or with the right, you know what I'm saying? Like 100% and fully. So I feel like our team didn't need I feel like we, we finally found our mentality. We found our mentality, which is the mentality that Penn State plays with. And, you know, you see it, you know, in the last two weeks and what we can do on the field. So as long as we keep that up and continue the mentality, keep the one and no effort, we can go come out with some wins. Audrey Schneider. Devin, you said you guys found your mentality. I guess, how would you describe the mentality of this offense right now after, you know, these back-to-back -back wins? Man, smashing off football. Just get downhill. It's run the ball down these people's throats and make them, you know, take their will away. That's what it is. And hopefully we can keep doing that and obviously open up the pass game too. And we got Sean with RPOs and everything else. And man, it just falls apart. As long as we get the running game going first and everything else falls after that. So we just got to keep out there, grind every single day, and just make sure these plays work and just keep that same effort up as we did the last two weeks. Tyler, do you? Devin, do you feel like this was the strongest overall game of your sophomore season? And if so, why was that the case today? No, I don't think it was my strongest overall game. Uh, honestly, I thought my strongest game was Nebraska when I had, you know, just pass protection, like, period. That was, I think that was the biggest part of my game because – I, I told you guys I've been harping on pass protection the whole game this whole season. So, you know, being seven for seven last, I mean, the Nebraska game, it was just, you know, good. And I think that right there was one of my best games about, you know, everything else. Mark Brennan. Devin, my condolences as well. I wonder if after you go through that sort of situation, how important was it to get back with with your uh, with your 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 Penn State family, all the guys, your your fellow players? Uh, what kind of support staff was that for you? I mean, it's just like family, man. It's just they, they were around me, just consoling me. You know, what I'm saying, giving me that love and everything else like that. And I definitely needed that at the time. And it was just, it's just been a rough, you know. So everyone faces adversity. Everyone's going through adversity. So. She got to keep pushing. That's so, all. It was definitely helpful for them to, you know, put their arm around me and to be the brothers that they are and to be the coaches and the men that they are. And, you know what I'm saying? Actually care for somebody else. You feel me? So it's good. Ryan Parsons. Hey, Devin. So due to like whether it was the weather or just the scheme today, there was probably a lot of situations where Rutgers knew that you guys were going to run the ball. How did you still manage to be effective in the run game when they were probably anticipating the play? Uh, I mean, we just kind of. I mean, you got – you call a play, you call a running play, you got one choice, you got to run the ball. So, either you block it right and get some yards or you don't at all. So, I mean, that was the only choices we had for, for when, it came, when it came down and started bringing that boundary safety down and started playing off our edges. Um, you know, we started hitting them in the mouth more. And that's what we got to keep doing. And it helped out. It worked out. It helped. And, you know, you got to block it right and, hope, and make sure the play, what we call, is right. And, you know what I'm saying, we get the yards we need. Nate Bauer. Hey, Devin, um, have you guys in the backfield seen a development from the offensive line through the course of the season? And how, how are things different? How, how, are, um, how is their play different from, from maybe it was at the beginning of the season? I mean, they're just playing harder. It's like I told you, it's mentality. You know, it starts with the up front. It starts with the line all the time. Um, you know, defensive line and offensive line. It starts in the trenches. And if you don't get those two parts done, then, you know, it's going to be a long game for uh, the offense or the defense. So, I mean, it, it starts with them. And, you know, we go as they go. So, the mentality is right. And, and they're on, it, and on, their, on their assignments and getting the blocks they need to get to. And, you know what I'm saying, playing hard, the running backs are going to follow after that and understand, like, y'all are moving people. We're doing this. We're falling behind y'all. And we don't move as y'all move. As I tell them every single game, I say, we move as y'all move. So, if y'all got the mentality, that right mentality, we don't move as y'all move. So, keep us pushing, keep pushing, you know. That's how it is. Tobias Wilborn. Um, in that fourth quarter there, about 12 minutes, you guys get the ball on the two-yard line. What did it mean to you guys to move the chain some and end up with the field goal? It means we got more work to do. 
that's what exactly what it told us that, you know, Penn State's offense, we don't, you know what I'm saying? We, we like to score in the red zone. And that's one thing everyone would love to do. And obviously having a long drive like that, you want to capitalize with a touchdown. So that's just one thing we got to keep, you know, that's just one thing, one extra thing we got to work on this next week is about scoring in the red zone, just getting those points on the board to help us secure these wins, you know what I'm saying, when we're in games like this. So I believe that, you know what I'm saying, we just got do 1% every week, just do 1% better. So that's one thing we got to work on is just getting better in those red zone situations and putting points on the board. Okay, last question here for Devin. Uh, Audrey Snyder, go ahead and wrap us up. No pressure. Uh, Devin, uh, last week Will had said that the, the package where he comes in is called the Falcon Package. Um, is that still the name for it? And if so, what's maybe like the most impressive thing you've seen him do out of that package in practice? I mean, shoot, I don't know if it's called a Falcon Package or not. You can't <laughs> tell me that. But uh, out of that package, I mean, you mean you just see Will, you know, he will. That's what I say. It. I mean, I, I love Will and the way he – he performs the way he does things in practice. I mean, he's a running back, but a bigger, a bigger running back that can throw the ball. So, you know what I'm saying? I like the way he does, he does, he does um, everything. I mean, he just had to do with a, a high, high effort, high mental, uh, great mentality. So does Sean too. So, you know, both of them can play, be in that package, but you know, Will got his own package. So yeah, Will go handle this thing and you know, he does what he does. So he's going to be a great person. He's a great, he's a great player. Thanks, Devin. All right. All right. Thanks, Devin. Thank you, everybody, very much. Thanks, Devin. Thank you.